inauguration of the Ghana Association Portsmouth took place on Saturday, 23rd June 2018 at the Admiral Lord Nelson School, Portsmouth. The event started with the Ghana High Commission deploying its mobile passport task force to capture some of the residents in Portsmouth and its environs who had applied for the issuance of the biometric passports. This exercise has taken the mission to Manchester, Glasgow, Liverpool, Birmingham, Dublin and Milton Keynes. The Ghana High Commissioner to UK and Republic of Ireland, His Excellency Papa Owusu Ankuma and his wife Augustina Owusu Ankuma were the special guests of honor. The well-attended event attracted Ghanaians and friends of Ghana from Portsmouth, Southampton and neighboring communities displaying Ghanaian culture and an exhibition of Ghanaian food, crafts and business services. Also gracing the occasion were Right Honourable Penny Modrant, Secretary of State to International Development and MP for Portsmouth North, Councillor Lee Mason, Lord Mayor of Portsmouth and Bobby Metta, Director of Global Affairs, University of Portsmouth. The MCs for the night were Dora Annan Jackson and Charles Esiedu. An opening prayer was said by Pastor Stuart Payne of Family Church, Portsmouth. I will say wow and wow and wow again. What a night we see this evening. The chairman of Ghana Association of Portsmouth, 
Mr. Isaac Beidou, welcoming all, expressed his special gratitude to the invited guests and commended the executives for their dedication and patriotism. He disclosed that the association is generally made up of Ghanaians and friends of Ghana to support their welfare. He urged other Ghanaians who are not yet members of the association to join where their expertise and skills could be harnessed for development. The chairman went on to elaborate on what led to the formation of the association. This association started in the year 1993 when a terrible incident happened in the University of Southampton where a Ghanaian international student died in his room and as if that was not enough, the body was never discovered until a few days when it's nearly decomposed. It became a national disaster, it was all in the media everywhere. So I remember I myself was a student then, so we decided to come together and form an association. Over the years, many people finished uni at the struggle job moved them about and the association completely became dormant. And four years ago, a group of ladies here approached me when I finished my church service and said, uh, Mr. Bailey, could you not start something because it appears that the Ghanaian population in this city are increasing but we don't have any association to champion our cause. That message sank well with me, and I'm pleased to tell you, four years today, the Ghanaian Association is here for all to see. Incidentally, it's been 25 years since the original, the original one was from was four. So again, today is a special. Now we have a long term goal, and by me mounting this stage, I'm appealing to all of you. This event is not just to come together. I have a message for all of us, and the message is simple and straightforward. Ladies and gentlemen, let us remember today, the day that all of us came together to lift the flag of Ghana High Association High. The day that the MP, the Lord Mayor, his Excellency, the uh, High Commissioner, and all the other dignitaries uh, that accompanied us, and all of you here have come together to bless this association. So from my own token as the leader of the group, I bless that the oil of grace and the glory demonstrated today never ran out. They never ran dry, and that many shall find hope and inspiration from what they see today. The vice chairman of the association, Ben Abubakar, encouraged all present to support the association's fundraising towards the provision of portable drinking water in targeted areas in Ghana. I therefore ask you today, when we start our charity program, to please donate generously and donate time. Winston, in the immortal words of Winston Churchill, we make living by what we get. Somebody else to 
follow, please. With all due respect, you say time. When you get to the, to the table, I'm choosing your food. Please, 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 please. In terms of the university uh, and Ghana, we are developing strong links and actually the, the chairman himself has studied at the university and he's originally from Ghana and a lot of the uh, executive uh, committee of the association and many of the people in this uh, room will have studied at the University of Portsmouth. Bobby Mekta, Director of Global Affairs, University of Portsmouth, in a short speech also applauded the leadership of the association for seeing the need to form an association that would unite Ghanaians in Portsmouth for a common cause. He was pleased to see several old students of his university present at the event and assured all gathered that unlike the situation in 1993, where a student from Ghana died from starvation and the lack of a network to help integrate into the community, the University of Portsmouth has in place a great system that ensures the welfare of every international student. So we have a very proud association both with Ghana, both with the association, and I've made a commitment uh, to the chairman in our discussions over the last few days that we will look to work very, very closely with the association and to build links with the association and their work in Ghana. So we're looking forward to a, a long and prosperous relationship and to, to build on, on the good work that's already been started. He ended his speech by making a presentation to the association on behalf of the university. It is those shared values which make our relationship really strong. And we are really impressed with what the government of Ghana is doing. The Right Honourable Penny Mordrant, Secretary of State for International Development and MP for Portsmouth North, in her speech, touched on the excellent relationship between UK and Ghana and informed the gathering that UK sees Ghana as a true partner for development. The Honourable Member also lauded the political leadership in Ghana for the various initiatives and interventions and commended the diaspora community for their contributions in every sector of the UK economy. And over the next 12 years, we want to eliminate extreme poverty for good everywhere in the world. And our partnership with Ghana is absolutely critical to that. But it didn't work out that way. There was a poetry recital by Judith Frimpon after which the Ghana High Commissioner gave his speech. And so now we have to help each other. Now your burden has to be my burden. And my burden has to be your burden. And your burden has to be our burden. I have to go to sleep and dream about helping somebody else to fulfill their dream. I have to dream about helping to put somebody through you. I bring you warm greetings from His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana. 
delivering his address, the Ghana's High Commissioner to UK and Republic of Ireland, His Excellency Papa Owusu Ankoma, reiterated his passionate call on Ghanaians in Portsmouth to join hands with Ghanaians back home in building a Ghana beyond aid. The High Commissioner stated that one of his primary goals after taking office a year ago has been to reach out to Ghanaians resident in the United Kingdom and Ireland to further deepen the diaspora engagement which already exists with the mission. He commended the executives for a wonderful gathering which was beyond expectation. In his speech, he said similar engagements had already taken him to Glasgow, Milton Keynes, Luton, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham and Hull. As you may know, President Kufuado has set before him a vision of a Ghana beyond it. And I would like to quote in extenso part of the speech he delivered at the 61st Independence Anniversary last March in Accra. And he said, quote, aid was never meant to be what would bring us to a developed nation status. A Ghana beyond aid is a prosperous and self-confident Ghana that is in charge of its economic destiny. To get to a Ghana beyond aid, we will have to effectively harness our own resources and creatively and efficiently deploy them for rapid economic and social transformation. It requires hard work, enterprise, creativity, and a consistent fight against corruption in public life. It will also require that we break from a mentality of dependency and adopt a confident can do spirit fueled by love for our dear country and not subordinate the common goal to build a prosperous nation to the selfish interests of a few. These gatherings, he said, has been very encouraging. Touching on the fundamentals of the Ghanaian economy, the High Commissioner indicated that the government's economic management team has performed creditably well to the admiration of both local and international bodies and the economy is tipped to be one of the best performing in sub-Saharan Africa this year. He also touched on some of the critical initiatives and programs being pursued by the government to build a prosperous nation. These included the implementation of the Free Senior High School Education Program, the launch by government on the 8th of February 2018 of the Digital Marketing and Entrepreneurship Program, 3. The Planting for Food and Jobs Program, 4. The establishment of the National Builders Corps to employ at least 100,000 youth in 2018 to assist in public sector service delivery in health, education, agriculture, sanitation and revenue collection. 5. Establishment of the Office of the Special Prosecutor Following his speech, the High Commissioner and his wife joined the special guests and the executives of the Ghana Association of Possible to cut the inauguration cake. This is a occasion for new opportunities. Amidst the great excitement by all, the Lord Mayor of Portsmouth proposed a toast. The success, prosperity, friendship and longevity of the Ghana Association in Portsmouth. Cheers. Association presented a guest of honor.
with gifts from Ghana, after which different Ghanaian associations gave congratulatory speeches to the Ghana Association Post Month. Supporting, so we've contributed a sum of 500 pounds. Yes, we are here to donate 200 pounds to Portsmouth. Thank you, thank you. We're going to put our donation in your account and we wish you all the best. God bless you. Thank you, thank you very much. We want to wish you all the best, giving us to do all that stuff. Thank you very much. The president of the association, Azik Bedu, gave a message of thanks to all present at the event. Anytime we gather like this and we want your presence, you will be here with us. For that we say thank you to you too. And please let us see to a postman know we are here and we are here to stay. Thank you very much. And again to the university. I hope your, 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 your item is not a chemistry book. If it is, then I'm donating it back to you to put in the school library. Ladies and gentlemen, let's also say a very big thank you to the university. We know if full scholarships and stuff are yet to come, and we also know that you've also told me that from time to time, when we need your presence, you will come in to support us. We thank you so much for your gift. And it's our pleasure also to say thank you and thank you once again. Thank you. Christina Kesua Frimpong from the Young Wing of the Association gave the vote of thanks. Your Excellency, I'll start by saying a very big thank you on behalf of the Chairman and all of us at the Ghana Association of Portsmouth and to you, the dignitaries, members of the diplomatic corps and young women for your presence and support, about which truly this occasion wouldn't have been this great. The special guest and executive of the Ghana Association Postmod took to the dance floor with live music provided by the Davidson Band. <laughs> Say, I am, I am, I 
Why are you doing this? Tell me that you're 